It's science time! With Hoover and Sparrow! Did you know that April 22nd was Earth Day? And this is the 50th year that we have celebrated that. You know, Earth has been around a lot longer than 50 years though. Over 4 billion years, that's a lot of zeros. Our planet is an amazing place, but it needs our help to thrive. That's why each year on April 22nd, more than a billion people celebrate Earth Day to protect our planet from things like pollution and deforestation. By taking part in activities like picking up litter and planting trees, we're making our world a happier, healthier place to live. And the idea of Earth Day came about to help bring awareness of the clean air, the air we breathe, and clean water, which is the water that we drink, and water for our animals. It might seem like it's everywhere, but clean, drinkable water is a limited resource. In fact, less than 1% of the water on Earth can be used by humans. The rest is either too salty or too difficult to access. Turning off the faucet when you brush your teeth can conserve up to eight gallons of water a day. To help save even more water, challenge yourself to take a shorter shower, but still get clean. Also the idea of protecting our environment, which includes our animals that are endangered, like our gorillas, and plants, those species. So we're trying to help our climate and our environment, which in the end will help you and me. So let's make every day Earth Day. The message of Earth Day, of protecting our Earth and keeping it healthy and happy, is a very important message for all of us. But it's also a day that we can get outside and celebrate the Earth. Get outside and have some fun. I like to do lots of different things outside. I might take a ball outside and throw it with a friend or play kickball. I might uh, grab some sidewalk chalk and go out and draw some pictures. Oh, another favorite that I have is going outside and blowing bubbles and watching them blow around in the wind. I bet Mrs. Hoover's gonna pop some of those. And one of my really favorite activities that I haven't done for a while, so I think I might go out now and do it, is throwing a Frisbee. So I'm going to grab my sunglasses and put on my sun hat, and I'm gonna grab my Frisbee and Mrs. Hoover, and we're gonna go have some fun. Catch, Mrs. Hoover. Ooh, I do like to play Frisbee. Thanks, Mrs. Sparrow. You know, there's other things I like to do outside too. I like to play ball or soccer and things like that. But do you know what else I like to do outside? To enjoy our earth and the things it has to offer outside. I like to read. Do you have maybe a book that we could read that might give us some other activities or ideas and things that we could do outside? I bet you do. Shadows by April Sayer. Searching for shadows, we run, hop, stare at lots of shadows here and there. Dragonfly shadows zip and pop, running horse shadows never stop. Our shadowy shapes shift as we dance, leg kick, leg kick, prance, prance, prance. My friend catches my shadow's hand. Hand in shadow, we walk the sand. A ball and its shadow fall and meet, rolling to my shadow's feet. We outline shadows with a piece of chalk, but later they've moved on the hot sidewalk. A man keeps a shadow under his hat. An umbrella opens, a shadow falls splat. Clouds move in, sponging shadows away. But the shadows return with the sun. Let's play. Hand shadows hop. 
through the tall green grass, underwater shadows, follow four fast bass. Toe shadows walk the gravelly creek. Sudden scary shadows make us shriek. Bird shadows skim over shrubs and rocks. Sundial shadows turn like clocks. Tree shadows make cool spots to rest. I think I like these shadows best. You know what, that book shadows give me an idea of an activity that we could do with just a flashlight and a figurine and a piece of paper. We could take our figurine, any kind, whether it be an animal like the gorilla we had earlier, and we could place them up here, and I could take my flashlight, and I can create a shadow just like that and project it on the back of the paper. If I wanted to, I could even take something to trace it with, like a marker or a pencil, and I could trace the outline of my figurine there and create a neat piece of art with that, like shadow art, and that would be fun. So I could use any kind of figurine to do that, and I would have a neat shadow art that way. What a great book about shadows. It gave us a couple of ideas to go outside and try. I'm going to take some chalk out and do some um, shadow tracings of either myself or if I don't have somebody to help me with that, I could take out a couple of shapes, a couple of buddies, and set them down and trace around them. The other idea was a sundial. Mrs. Hoover's gonna grab her hat and sunglasses and meet me outside and show you how to make a sundial. So in our book, Shadows, we just learned about a sundial, and that's what we're gonna learn to create today. So you're gonna need a paper plate, and then you can use a straw or even a pencil for this, it doesn't matter, and then you're gonna want something to write with, like a crayon. So I'm gonna take my paper plate, and I might have someone help me poke a hole in, I already did that, but maybe ask mom or dad to help you with that. And then I'm gonna use a straw today. I'm gonna take my straw, and I'm gonna put it through the center of the hole, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write the numbers on my paper plate, kind of like a clock. So when we've ever we studied the clocks, we know that the number 12 goes at the top. And then I'm gonna go all the way around. And so I'm gonna write my numbers all the way around this clock, just like this. Okay, and that is going to be how we create our sundial. So you can see all the numbers all the way around. And then guess what we need for our sundial to make it work? We're going to need the sun. So we're gonna to have to go outside and get the sun, see if we can find a shadow to finish our sundial. So I brought out my sidewalk chalk and a little figure that I'm going to put down and I'm going to get the shadow. So I can set it down. Then, if I come out at different times during the day and set it in the same spot, we can see how the shadow moves and it kind of imitates a sundial. But you can do character drawings and I can see my shadow right there, but I would need a friend to do my shadow. If, if you don't have anybody to trace your shadow, then just bring an action figure or some, some standing character out with you and you could do their shadow. Now, let's check back on Mrs. Hoover's sundial. So I placed my sundial outside and you can see it is cast a shadow. It looks like it's on the number 12 and guess what? It is 12 o'clock, it is noon. So now I'm gonna check back on my sundial in a couple hours and I'm gonna see what happens. I've attached my sundial down so hopefully the wind doesn't blow it away but let's see what happens when I check on it later and see if that shadow has moved. Well, it's been a few hours. Can you see if the shadow has moved? It sure has. It looks like it's on the three now. According to the shadows of the sun, it must be close to three o'clock. I'm gonna check back later to see if it moves again. 
Well, wouldn't you know it? Look, the shadow's moved again. It looks like it's on the number six. I bet I could keep doing this. It looks like my shadow moves with the sun. Isn't that pretty cool? Even if it's not a sunny day out, you can still have some fun drawing pictures with shadows. All you need is a cardboard tube. Maybe you've got some of those that you pulled out of the recycling so you can repurpose and some plastic wrap. I just used a zip bag because we were out of plastic wrap, so I cut a piece of plastic from a zip bag. And then all you do is place the plastic wrap on the end of your tube, you can tape it, and then find a sticker or a shape that you would like to project and, and put it on the end. Then you take a flashlight and shine it through the tube and point it at your paper and you can trace around that shape. Now I had a larger sticker that wouldn't fit on that, that tube, so I took a, a scrap piece of construction paper that I had left and I folded it and rolled it into a larger tube and put some plastic wrap on it. That way my larger sticker, maybe this dragonfly or this dog or this cat, the outline would fit and I could use my larger stickers. Go ahead and have fun with those shadows indoor with a flashlight too. We would like to challenge you to get outside and do an activity with the sun or with light and do a chalk drawing tracing of yourself or of an action figure. Or you could make a sundial like Mrs. Hoover did. If it's a cloudy day or it's raining and you need to stay inside, you can use some artificial light like a flashlight and do one of the other activities that we did in the video or make up your own. But we would love to see them, right Mrs. Hoover? We can't wait to see all your Earth Day projects and all how creative you have been. So again, if you have those projects and you're in Mrs. Sparrow's class, you can upload those to her class dojo. If you're in my class, you can put those on our class tag. And if not, you can leave a comment on this video. So again, let's celebrate Earth Day every day.